Welcome to another Gale Force Twins episode. In today's video, we are in the beautiful Florida Keys and we are gonna be snorkeling, diving, and exploring the reefs of the Keys. We are gonna be doing some shallow reefs. That's kind of our goal today. My name's Amanda, Emily's behind the camera. Gale Force Mom came with us today and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. I think it's time to follow Emily and Gale Force Mom under the surface, dive down, and see how many different species we can identify. Right now, you are looking at a pair of gray angelfish. Look at how big they are compared to that coral head they're swimming next to and compared to Emily that just swam by. Let's take a minute and learn some really cool facts about these fish. Baby angelfish will hatch within only 15 to 20 hours. That is incredibly fast. The baby angelfish will then live in floating beds of plankton, seagrass, or sargasm until they're old enough to swim down and live on the reef. What you're looking at right now is a pair of angelfish chasing each other around the reef as a sort of way to fall in love. If other fish approach the angelfish chasing each other around, that fish will quickly be chased away. This pair of angelfish wants nothing to do with anybody else, they just want to hang out with each other. Adult angelfish will create cleaning stations for the other fish on the reef. They will eat the parasites living on the bodies of snapper, jacks, eels, and more. Now let's continue to explore the reef and see what other species we can find. Let's look between these coral heads. What kind of friends do we have living on the reef? Oh, look at that, a lone angelfish. I wonder where his buddy is. Maybe this guy hasn't found her yet. Alrighty, I see our next species. You guys see those little fish swimming in schools? Yep, they are yellow with bright blue stripes. These guys look like blue stripe grunts. If you've ever caught a grunt while fishing on the reef, you can hear them making a grunting noise. They do this by grinding their teeth together. Grunts are commonly found on the reef, in mangroves, and seagrass beds. We commonly catch these guys in our pinfish traps as well. I even see a few mangrove snappers hanging out with their grunt friends. Grunts will eat crustaceans, bivalves, and small fish. This next school of fish you are looking at is another school of blue stripe grunts. The meat on a grunt is flaky and white, similar to a snapper. However, they are commonly thrown back because of how bony they are. You would need to catch some really large grunts or a lot of grunts to really get enough meat off of them to make a meal. I bet you guys didn't know that coral reefs are like the rainforest of the sea. They are incredibly diverse and home to thousands upon thousands of different fish and sea life. It's the perfect place for a snapper or eel or a ton of different species to find food, shelter, and raise their families. The reefs in the Florida Keys are actually considered a barrier reef that protects our coastlines from storms and hurricanes. Florida's coral reef system is the only coral reef system in the continental United States. Isn't that crazy? It's always good to remember when you are snorkeling on any reef not to touch anything. Coral and many fish on the reef protect themselves with a mucus layer, just like our skin protects us. When we touch the coral or fish, we could be removing this mucus layer and exposing the animal to new bacteria. It's also great to be mindful of your fins. Try not to let your fins kick or bump the reef below you. I know it's hard, but with a lot of practice, you can get good at it.
Let's take a break from identifying the fish and look at the sea fans. The sea fans you are looking at are called Gargonia ventolina. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. These sea fans are usually purple, but can also be yellow, orange, and even brown in color. What's super neat about sea fans is fully mature sea fans will grow with the direction of the waves. While the juvenile sea fans will grow in any direction, but as they mature, they too will slowly shift to face the current. The Gargonia ventolina, once again, hope I'm saying that right, are passive feeders, and they feed primarily at night by trapping zooplankton in their polyps. Just like a spider web traps bugs, that is why it's so important for these guys to face the current and waves to trap their meals. Next species, I'm looking at a parrotfish. Do you see that super bright rainbow colored fish? Yep, that's a parrotfish. This species gets its name from its teeth. Their teeth will form on the outside of their jaw bones, forming a bird or parrot-like beak. They use their beaks to eat algae, coral, and rocky substrates from the reef. Would you look at that? It's an Atlantic blue tang. If you like finding Nemo, this is a very similar species to Dory. Dory is actually a royal blue tang, which is found in the Pacific Ocean. So these guys you are looking at are more like her cousins. Check this out. Do you see that bright yellow fish with the two black vertical stripes? That's a pork fish. Just like grunts, these fish will grind their teeth together to make a grunting noise. Like a pig. That's why we call them pork fish. Now pork fish are nocturnal and will usually eat their meals under the cover of night. Their diet consists of invertebrates, mollusks, and worms. This is a moon jelly. These guys are almost entirely translucent. Just like in Finding Nemo, you don't want to touch the tentacles on these jellies. Although it might be a mild sink to humans, it can be deadly for small fish. The moon jellies eat by catching things like plankton and small organisms in their tentacles, and then they bring their fresh catch up into their bodies for digestion. I hope you guys enjoyed identifying all these fish we saw on the reef. Let's head up to the surface and see what Emily has to say. What was your favorite part? That's a good question. My favorite part of the dive was there was a lot of fish and I feel like that's so cliche to say, but there was a lot of schools. There was like mangrove snappers, a lot of grunts and tons and tons of schools of fish. I did see a small black grouper that I chased for you guys and I definitely didn't get it on film. So if I had a favorite part, I'd say the black grouper, but I feel like that's not fair to say because you guys didn't get to see it. There were also some pairs of angelfish. That was really cool watching the two angelfish hang out together. And the fish were very desensitized to people. There was no doubt about that because it is a reef with mooring balls so literally I could just sit there and stare at them and they would just stare right back at me so that was cool I feel like the fish were a little interactive no kudas no sharks but Amanda said that she saw a shark and a kuda on the drone I didn't see one but they're in there guys it's the ocean kind of bummed we didn't get one on camera for you though from like my perspective anyways we hope you guys had fun diving the reef with us you ho we hope that you learned something cool about some of these species that we saw. In the meantime, we want you to get out there, have fun, and stay safe.